he's either gonna show LeBron or show Coach. That's like the first thing. And I'm not gonna say no. I'm not yeah. gonna say no. Yeah, what are you gonna like, do? Sure. No, Pat. You can't yeah. take my camera. I was like, yeah, look, because it's yeah. a foul. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, let me see it. So he takes it, and then I'm like, hot. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I'm just there. And then as soon as I turn around, gives him a tech. I thought it was his second tech of the game. So I thought he was thrown out of the game. Like everything escalated yeah. so yeah, fast. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. Because you're showing the ref right away, basically. Yeah, he grabbed it, went straight to the ref. And then like <laughs> just straight technical, like gets thrown out. And then like, I couldn't even like sit outside in the arena the rest of the game. My stomach was just like, You were just oh, sick. No. Rock Nation, welcome back to episode 74 of the 505 Podcast. Today, we welcome a very special guest. She is the team photographer of the Los Angeles Lakers. She's got a handshake with LeBron James. Please give a big hand for Abigail Keenan Field. Welcome Thank to the you. show. This Thank is you, fellas. a huge day, Abigail, because mm -hmm. we've lobbed you a softball with this one-handed crack, and I want to see what you can give the people out there. Okay, wait, don't start it yet. It's got to be off the table, and then you can get your hand under it. I take it off the table. Yeah, and, then and, then you, and then you put your it's finger It's going to be hard with the nails, but oh. I think she's tough. adapting. Yep. Boom. Oh. Up oh. and then oh. You didn't tell me that far. Yeah. Right. Up. Oh, well, I don't this. know why I'm doing it left. You got yeah, it. You got do it righty. Up okay, pick it go. up. Yep. Go. Yeah. Oh. It's so hard with the nails, but honestly, very impressive. And you didn't dent yeah. it. You know, I would say difficulty rating a 10. Yeah, like I think so. Gymnastics. If, if this was gymnastics, it'd be a 10. Abigail, you get a 7-1. Come on, baby. Welcome to the show. I'm I'm so excited to have you here, and I don't say this lightly. I think you're one of the most talented people that I know in my network. So I'm just really grateful to have you here. Hell yeah! Thanks, guys, for having me. That was a wonderful intro, and I'm more than excited and happy to be here. Let's go. I uh, I want to start us off on a hot foot. Okay. Okay. Mm. So there was a there was a game this year where they're playing this game, and it was a very intense moment. Oh. And oh. during this play, someone someone walked up to you and grabbed the camera out of your hand and got a technical foul. <laughs> Talk us through that moment. Okay. What was occurring? Uh, where were you at the city? And what was the shot? That yeah, what was the see? shot that he wanted to see? Um, it was in Boston, and obviously it was a foul, mm. and they weren't playing the foul on the screen, so no one had evidence everyone was kind of like talking about the moment but no one had any visuals to go with it and i look at my camera and i was with rohan and i was like oh my gosh like this is <laughs> clear as day like what but obviously i'm not like it was a weird situation and uh long story short i showed someone who was not in the game because i knew like i'm not going to show a player i'm not mm. going to show a coach that's unprofessional i showed someone who was not in the game the person that was not in the game then told Patrick Beverly <laughs> and um, was like, and then Pat was like, let me see your camera. And at that time it was, a, it was a rental camera. So I was like, he's either gonna show LeBron or show coach. That's uh -huh. like the first thing. And I'm not gonna say no, I'm yeah. not gonna say no. Yeah, what so are you gonna like, do? Sure. No, Pat, you can't yeah. take my camera. I was like, yeah, look, cause it's yeah. a foul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, let me see it. So he takes it and then I'm like, hot. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I'm just there. And then as soon as I turn around, gives him a tech. I thought it was his second tech of the game. So I thought he was thrown out of the game. Like everything escalated yeah. so yeah, fast. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. Because you're showing the ref right away, basically. Yeah, he grabbed it, went straight to the ref. And then like just straight technical, like gets thrown out. And then like, I couldn't even like sit outside in the arena the rest of the game. My stomach was just like. You were just oh, sick. No. And then I had our, uh, like some of my coworkers texted me and was like, you're okay. Like you're all good. Don't worry, you're a team player. Like way to go. Or like, you know, just being really nice about mm. it. And I was like, okay, I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one teaches you what to do in that scenario. And right. I tried to handle it my best and that all worked out, I guess. Well, I don't think it's ever happened. No, no. I don't think, yeah. You're just trying to get a dub. You know? yeah. That's the whole point of the team is to win games, right? Yeah, you're just trying to help out win games. What were you shooting on when you got that shot? The R3. Okay. Oh. What lens? Um, was this like a 70 was, to 200, was, no. like super tight shot, like clear as day? It was 24 to 70. Um, I mean, focus is great. Everything just looks great. Like, <laughs> but, um, Ultra high tech. Yeah, like could nail the shot. It's <laughs> like the, the first picture someone sees when they come to your website. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so much free 
press for canon like oh yeah. our oh canon gosh. rep i let him know i was like this is a really funny moment like that was the rental you know like everything's okay and he's like so many people have been emailing me like that and then like two months three months later he then let me know again like i'm still getting people telling me about that like yeah. you, you probably inspired a whole new generation of canon shooters yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Canon, yeah. <laughs> for the, back. the camera of the nba <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> so gail back in 2019 i was um trying for a job at the lakers and so i show up to this game south bay lakers game i know no one there I've, I've dropped tacos. I, it's been a shit show when I get there, right? You spilled them? I spilled them everywhere. Yeah, on the court, it was great. Did I you know, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, didn't know I was that. trying to do a GoPro transition. And so it just had it on my head and I like whipped my head down. It just went right into the tacos, like all over the floor. And the security guy's like, don't worry about it. I'm like frantically freaking out. Dude, I thought drop tacos was like an industry term. No, you know? no, 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 no. Literal tacos. And I went to sit on the floor and I was met with this like sweetest human who was there. And she was uh-huh. like, guide. She's like, no, you're good. Like, we're going to be good. You're going to like just shoot well. Like, do your thing. Thing. And so during that time, how long had you been with the Lakers? Um, do you remember what month that was? That was probably January, like right right in the beginning. I had of January. just started in September. So okay. I was an intern and I was just shooting everything and everything that they would like that made sense. And I was thrown into things and I had done a few games at that point. But um, yeah, and then our, our boss had told us that we were. Uh, we had two candidates that were going to come to like two different games. And then she like asked my opinion and I was like, (laughs) (laughs) what was your process when you were getting the internship? Like, cause you had to make a video, right? Mm -hmm. So did you have to like show them your portfolio, go in for interviews and then shoot a game? Mm. No, just cause my role was, um, social and editorial content. So like, or associate. So I was more specific on helping with social and website. And then it was a plus that I could shoot. And so going in, um, yeah, the role was like more editorial on the social team. But like I came in, it was hard. I had to like sell myself in the right way. I'm like, this is what I love to do. This is my background. But I studied journalism to pair with storytelling to understand how to tell a story. And social also really interests me and like, all the other experiences I had with shooting, they didn't have really a social person. So I was kind of doing both, but like not a ton of formal experience, but I mean, I had one other internship with social and stuff, but I came in being like, I'll I'll do whatever. Like, and I'm happy I did that because I, I just wanted to come in and be willing to help out in any way and just absorb everything as an intern. And has the job, changed a lot since you first started as an intern and now being full-time yeah because i so i was an intern for that 1920 season and then COVID hit and all the nba pretty much laid off their interns so then i moved back home and then i was just doing freelance and different projects there and then when things were opening back up i started interviewing in the sports space and a spot i was almost going to go to another team and then a spot opened back up and so it made sense and I wanted to be back in LA. And so I came back, I was still a social coordinator. I did a year as social coordinator and then a full-time photo spot opened up. So I interviewed for that and then made the transition of all photo. Oh, dope. So Abigail's our full-time, which is, I was explaining to them, it's very rare in the NBA. There's not a ton of just sole photo jobs, correct? Mm -hmm. Like how many of you guys do you think there is? Like there's not one at every team. I know, every team's just structured so different. Mm -hmm. Like, Like we said, like, there's other people whose roles are half social, half shooting. And then like they have other people that come and shoot. And then like when I was an intern, uh, the full-time photo was also head social, which like that to me are like such separate. Yeah. Like it's just, things are just evolving as they go. And so I think I'm I'm happy. Like now that I'm in, I felt to do both and to balance both and then to get a role of like all the stuff you love to do, I was like, it's the best. And oh, yeah. isn't it funny how people think it's like, oh, you can shoot the games and do photos, but then also run our social. Like it's, right. yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's right. like really not. Right. It's yeah, and you want and you want someone to be devoted and passionate about separate things. And it's great that I had that background because now I have a great relationship with our social team that I'm then able to like bring up ideas or because like with this gig and any other photo stuff I do, like I ask a ton of questions before the gig because I want to know like, how is this all, how's this being cropped? How's this mm. being sent out? Is this on the website? Like, where is this going to live? Because it totally changes how you're shooting. And so I've learned to just do that like before anything starts because it just 
packages way better. And you talked about this, like I, I was trying to pick your brain about your process a minute ago, and you were saying how now you're shooting almost as if it's like edited in your camera, yeah. right? Like yeah. how has that changed from maybe when you were like in college at BYU to now when you actually go get those images and you're firing them off like so fast? Yeah, I think it's like a learning curve with equipment. Like I've been shooting since I was like 15 and so I feel like things catch up. Like at the beginning, I would lean on editing and knew I could do everything in post and obviously nail the settings as best as I can. And then I feel like since being here and like right before this job, I've just absolutely perfected the settings exactly how I want it. So then the post is as quick and efficient as possible because in sports, it just has to be so quick. Right. And you literally can have the greatest photo ever, but if it's not delivered at the right time, like no one cares about it. So just like every other platform. But um, but yeah, I think I've really tried to nail the in. And it honestly doesn't burn me out as much. Like with other jobs, I'm I'm editing so heavily with other freelance stuff that you almost get burnt out by doing photo. But I feel with this job in this position, I, it's long hours and it's long games and that kind of stuff, but I don't, I don't really get as burnt out, I feel, because I'm not like sitting in Photoshop for hours and hours and hours and hours. Like our designers are so talented and I can bring them something and they can tweak it for how they need it. Like most of the time they're gonna tweak it anyways. So like, um, yeah, I, I like as best in camera as possible. Mm -hmm. Get it, Does ahead. that mean like not like cropping, like getting like the zoom, like just like nailing like the exact like composition you want so you don't have to change it in post or even just like the color or like? Um, no, I think th that's the one like hands-on thing is cropping. I still want mm -hmm. like, I feel, um, and I've talked to other photographers about this with sports specifically, but like when you're shooting, I shoot it to specifically be cropped a certain way. Right. And then like, even like at the end of season, when I look back, it's just such an artistic way to approach to it where I'll look at certain photos and I'll crop it differently. And it just like is way different. So yeah, so I would say colors and cropping, I try to keep as much to myself and then yeah, let everything. the let the editors yeah. edit. I feel yeah, that. So go ham. So Braden walks into that thing. How did you decide this is the guy that should get the, the job? <laughs> <laughs> Smelling like tortillas, you know. Spilled everything. Spilled everything. <laughs> and you're just like, I just relatable. You know? I loved how comfortable he was though. Like uh, he you really just gotta fake it to right. make it. And I love that like I felt that he was comfortable in the space. Um, just wasn't intimidated by anything. Whereas like sometime coming into like a new team or sports environment, people like, obviously you want to be respectful, but at the same time, like no one's looking at you as much as you think they're looking at you. And so right. you just gotta just go and do your thing. And that's what I remember about it. <laughs> that's so funny. How, how has your process changed Abigail from the beginning of the job, like shooting South Bay to now when you cover like a Lakers game, like walk us through a game day routine for Abigail. Games that's at seven. Question. Games at seven o'clock. What time you get into the arena? That's a good question. I'm leaving. <laughs> is the fit, is the fit, is the fit picked out the night before? Yeah. Oh. And are that, you that, are you rolling with LeBron to the game? Or <laughs> you're going shotgun? <laughs> um, that's kind of actually, I've never thought about it, but I fall asleep by picking out my outfit for the next day. Like I'm like, okay, what shoes do I want to wear this? And then uh, I like, goes, eases me right <laughs> Sounds um, nice. Do you have to wear a vest? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it, don't get it, me it hinders the drip. Don't get me started drip. on the vest. Dude. Dude, you guys don't should try to find started. a way to make the vest augment the fit like make the vest a part of dude the, we need like to rock in a board I mean, dude, plan, like, yeah. Drake. <laughs> plan that no you can know you have to wear the vest like wear some orange swaggy shoes maybe dude. and then like compliment the, the, vest. the vest is brutal we need to you know seasons october we need to prep now and yeah. like yeah we, we off season we've done stuff we need vests. to like because the vest is part of the arena the part of staples right. crypto so like but when you go to other teams things being on the road has its benefits because you can see how other people do certain things. And I've seen other other shooters have their own vest for their team, oh. which is the only reason I want a different vest. Like I hate the smock, whatever it is. But like yeah. the reason is because when I'm taking someone's photo, we don't have our badge on. Like we look like every other photographer, which is fine. Like we're meant to just blend in. Like I, we don't need whatever. I just want them to know that like we are with the team. Like mm -hmm. we are. So the we are not. Know, yeah. We are not Los Angeles. We're not other platforms that whatever like they know where their photos going and like if i was getting my photo taken i would want to know most of the time i'm asking them there's times like it's just annoying to be asked where it's like loud and they're like why are you talking like do you know what i mean so just to have a vest of like we're with the team lakers like right. 
Because does that get you, not to derail the conversation, but does that get you like more priority, like saying like, okay, we're the Lakers team over just like a random media person that's shooting photos or like, like that's like top, top, top dog, like more than Getty even? Um, or? Get, access Getty, is just different for them. You, you, so they get more access. No, like like Abigail and I, right? Yeah. We're able to go. We're we're what's called like red certified or whatever. Ooh. So we can go with Spectrum, who's right. the TV partner. Right. We can go in like the back or the okay. locker room if we are like coordinated with the media team, right. media yeah. relations people. It's not like mm-hmm. we just don't walk into the locker room. Right. Yeah. It's like a known thing of like we're gonna go film or shoot this. Like okay, sounds good. Like and so there's only like a handful of people that can do that. Everyone else is just on the court. Got it. So they're not going like the back alley and can, get, getting those moments. Can you be like, if a Getty guy's like in the way of your shot that you want to get, can you be like, Lakers, move on? <laughs> Dude, yeah. they're all pretty nice. Yeah. Like, but if you had a better vest, maybe you could. <laughs> and Getty's <laughs> like, as soon as they're out of the locker room in that tunnel, Getty's then right with us. And then we get to the court. And then I feel like everything pregame is kind of like free for all. Mm-hmm. Like everyone comes Everyone's there. very respectful. I always, I always I've see never, I've, pregame. I've never had a problem at this at crypto with a photographer, video person. Really? Yeah, I feel like there's like a mutual respect. Sure. Where everybody's like, yeah, like you're getting. Except the TV guys can sometimes get mm-hmm. angry. Get out of my shot. I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry. Well, and like <laughs> it, it always works better with better relationships with everyone. Like mm-hmm. everyone's so respectful and great to work with them. The better relationship you build with them, you like. It's like a dance. You like let was, them go, and yes, then you go, right. and like we it all is got like, our stuff. It is like a dance. I've noticed. I feel like one time I just like zoned out at the game, and I'm like looking at everyone, just kind of like moving. I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is lit- crazy. This is literally a dance like, from <laughs> all these different. Numbers. No, seriously, you see, like you have like the the people, <laughs> dude, <laughs> break out in song and yeah, dance, yeah. like yeah, just like the musical. <laughs> where it's all going. The hangover meme. <laughs> yeah, the just numbers. drop the cameras. <laughs> no, but okay. Back to what we were saying about your your pregame routine. So you get the fit picked out the night before yeah. and then what time are we arriving for a 7 p.m game 7 p.m game i need to be there at two and i feel like i've gotten a lot better i would like cut it really close and now i'm like it's just not worth it and it's so frustrating to get there like two minutes after because then you're waiting another two hours for anyone else so oh. i want to get there 30 minutes before the time that two o'clock, so like one thirty, leaving my house like in my car at one. Okay. And then and then okay, we get there, we do walk ins. Yeah. So you're sitting where are you sitting for the walk ins? I've mixed it up. I did the main tunnel at the beginning of the season and then the lighting is just like Dark. not the greatest. It's and really so I, good. I I found I really liked it in that tunnel right before the locker room and then that to us for me i liked it because it's all lakers wrapped and then it's like specifically ours that look a little different but it goes both ways like the crypto or the the staples walk-ins are like very famous and iconic so you but they get those anyways from getty and so i like providing it there but i think there's always room to try something new and like um mix it up so, so. You, you're trying to mix up the walk-ins you did like yeah. three different locations and this year walk-ins are players walking into the stadium in their fits yeah just no vests yeah no vests. They just don't. to clarify for people <laughs> Russell yeah. Westbrook like sometimes wore a vest <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> he would right. So, he wore a vest every day he'd wear lots of vests <laughs> This is where you're seeing like Kyle Kuzma and like the giant oh yeah the pink sweater that's like a walk-in yes Abigail was he on the Lakers when he wore that no, I think no, that was the Wizards. These are the Wizards. Oh. Yeah. So the long sweater, yeah, those mm-hmm. Wizards. So after walk-ins happens, that goes until what time? And then what, um, what's your what do you do after that? That is until depends if they have like a walk-through practice or not, but let's just say it goes to five. And then from like five to seven is their them warming up, them shooting. And then that's where like a lot of different sponsored stuff fits in there. So like I'll get a shot list from our team of all the things that needs to be covered sponsors sponsors wise. Um, and that's just like juggling a million things that like, it's like, okay, this time, this time, this time, and just like rearranging them and figuring that all out and then eat dinner at that point. What's the dinner like? It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Is it yeah. the whole team eat? No, they probably play. It's all probably media. Eat before, mm-hmm. right? it's all one, the media. And oh. that's another thing, like comparing things on the road, like we have it really good. We oh. have a really good. We, we have, have a good. We have and a good it's life. so social. Like everyone is just like, it's so fun. Like yeah. I love the energy in that room. And it's a mix of like people that have been here for like 30 years, people that are new, people from, you know, everyone's different from every team. So the opposing team's media is in there. Laker girls are in there. MR, like everything's there. And it's just like, honestly, that's like my favorite part of the game. Is just it, the media room. So, that's funny. Which team has the worst food? 
and when you go on the road trips, which is like, oh, dude, Oklahoma City. Like, we're, we're really know, asking you, you the hard you, know you, know you know what has the best food? Like, not even a question. Oh, I'm excited to see. Detroit, dude. I know really? I haven't been. Detroit, really? Michigan puts it down. They have really? a new arena, and yeah. I haven't oh. been yet. But they got Little Caesars in there. How is the, how's the Staple, or Target Center, Minneapolis? How's the uh, media food? Ooh, Target I was, Center. I was going to say... I, I'm not going to point out one team, but the Midwest is rough. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that for just, me. just because, oh, there is one really good thing that Minneapolis had. Okay. Or I don't know if they had. Only have, one. It's fine. Just one. It I don't me. know if it was all. I don't know if it was every game, but the last time I went, they had those slide freezer f- fridges, oh, like did. literally at yes, the gas station, did. and they had. Oh, ice cream yeah. sandwiches. It you guys was are known amazing. for those. Mm-hmm. Are would... they really? Oh yeah, a lot of ice cream in Minnesota. <laughs> I don't know why, because it's so cold all year round. Yeah. But... And beer. It was great. Beer, cheese well, skirts. That's but more Wisconsin. I like oh, Minneapolis is cool though because the arena is connected to our hotel. Yeah, everything is connected oh, yeah. by Sky White or Sky Because the Walk. snow situation, it's so cold, it gets dude. so cold. So you can get to anywhere from anywhere downtown only inside. It's pretty wow. rad. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. It's all like you just gotta like kind of. It's like a maze, but wow. yeah, you can get to anywhere. I was. Out on the streets walking in the cold. Yeah, just that's like, on you. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the walk-ins real quick. Are you shooting with a flash? Yeah, uh-huh, I'm, I'm shooting with like a diffused flash, just straight up, and then I'll go this way and then turn it. I, we just got a new flash, and I like love it. But you- I, I want to play. I want to play more with light. Like I've just shot so much natural light like, yeah. in all my freelance work. Um, I feel comfortable with assisted lighting, but like there's so much I want to learn. And, yeah. Like, Are you talking to the players when they're coming in? Like, yes and no. Because if I'm talking, then they're talking in the photo. But then like, oh. I almost yeah. I kind of just wait till they go in, and then some days no, some days yes. Like, kind of feel that what are you energy. Saying? You're like looking good. <laughs> Austin Reeves, sick fit. Austin, Austin always rocks that same hoodie. I yeah, love yeah. it. He's, love a, he's it. straight a, to business. USA basketball this week, baby. Yeah. I know. Hold, I just, it down for I just us. Saw, so I just saw some of the clips and my cousin is on the reserve squad. So oh, he's sweet. playing against mm. sick. The, the center. Mm-hmm. Oh, how cool. Yeah, That's I know. Awesome. I'm so, I'm so, so proud. And he just started a podcast. Oh, oh a player's fun. podcast. It's Play-pod. awesome. Your cousin's a center. Yeah. Is he like seven feet tall? He's six ten. So he was Tall with um, he was with the Kings G League team, and then he got called. This is a funny story. He got called up for I don't know how many games, but one of the games was against the Lakers. This was before I was traveling, mm. and it was in Sacramento. So there's like a photo of him with like it, it's the year we won. So it's like the winning squad behind him. It's so sick. And then um, he's now with the Ignite in Vegas. Oh, oh that's cool. fun. Okay, so you were saying how you get like a list of yeah. like the sponsor stuff, right, mm-hmm. to shoot. Do they also give you a list of celebrities that are going to come to the game? And how do you go about approaching celebrities and asking them for photos? Abigail's the best at this, dude. No, no, I'm not even kidding when I tell I mean, you, I've dude. I've seen some of these photos. All the celebs of the game love Abigail. Nice. Like, dude, she's like... Tight with the yeah, I also feel like this slaps. is. I also feel like this is why you need a new vest because they like they yeah. recognize you exactly. right as Abigail, but they're like, oh, I can stop Abigail, her from a mile away. Abigail in a the pink vest, vest. Yeah, yeah, dazzle. right? Pink vest. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, sometimes um, they'll let us know ahead of time. Most of the time, I would say we don't know. So it's honestly so fun because mm. it's especially certain weeks and certain games are bigger than others so you know the anticipation before the game if it's the new york knicks or if it's on a big weekend it's a saturday game or whatever it is like you can kind of read uh the room but then when they walk in it's it's just i feel like i i'm i'm happy i'm i'm pretty good with faces i used to be really good with names and then i i don't know i get older and i suck but like i can see a face and i'm like "Mm, i've seen that somewhere but um but yeah they walk in and then we kind of have a group chat being like, okay, who's covering this, whatever. And I'm like, I'm on it. And I also like to read them. I let them sit for a second. I don't want them to like sit down and then like immediately right. get yeah. bombarded. And so I let them sit for a second. I see how they, do they care about the game? Are they just there with their friends? Are they having a great time? Are they like sad? Are they trying to hide from the cameras? Like I try to read all that and that determines like, how I, what I'm saying, like how I'm talking to them. But most of the time it's just, it's literally the same line of like, hey, I'm with the Lakers, do you mind if we take your photo? Which is confusing, cause it, I'm asking, do you mind? So then they're like, yes. 
And I'm mm. like, is that a no or a yes? <laughs> but most of the time they're like, oh no, that's fine. I'm like, <laughs> right. Right. Perfect. <laughs> and so do you have some that you like have shot enough where they're like, you're like homies with almost? Um, or like our girl, or, our girl, sweetie. She nice. loves she do, she's Abigail. always at the Lakers games she too. And she Abigail. like, she loves taking photos herself. Mm. So she's a photographer. So she loves like what I'm oh, cool. doing. Cause oh. she loves it herself. Get her on the pod. You got <laughs> yeah. Got it. Um, <laughs> that'd be crazy. Corey. Oh yeah, C- Corey Gamble's a he's just a diehard sure. Lakers f- fan. Classic. My favorite every, Kardashian. He's at every yeah. game. <laughs> Me too. <dude. laughs> he's at every. He's great. He's, he's so great. nice. Sees the tickets. He's, he's so enthusiastic. There. I still have no idea what he does. <laughs> he's, just like, I just know that yeah, name. He's married so to Chris well. Jenner. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be the life. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> just hanging out. He's sick though. Yeah. And then I don't think she recognizes me, but Halsey's always just mm. so nice and like huge, huge Lakers fan, and then like so happy to take a photo happy whatever angle like just great who is the one you were the most nervous to shoot if you were like oh my god um, it's denzel you know yeah. <laughs> that'd be me um <laughs> Man I, w- on fire. I didn't i didn't even ask justin bieber i was like i can't like mm. i just know this guy has just been like i love him so much too uh-huh. so i was like freaking out but i was like i can't take i can't add to this hatred he has for photographers right. like i can't so i just took it from afar Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was pretty nervous for Jack Harlow. Oh, I, sure. I really love him. I, I had waited like he, you know, he goes to all these other games, but he'd never come to a Lakers game. I was very excited, but I like wanted to be like really smooth. Like mm-hmm. he's really smooth. So I wanted to be really smooth. <laughs> Um, and I tried my best, and he was really nice. He was great. I was That's like, so funny. I was like, I didn't even. I was like, how was it? Like I was just like, we've been waiting all season for you to come by, and he's like. He's like, why is that? And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> why is that, baby? Yeah, no, like, just so smooth. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, like, but the- he was so nice. <laughs> and so then he was homies with D'Lo. So we got like a great picture of him and D'Lo. Like that. dapping it up. It was great. Oh, yeah, can dope. you talk a little bit about getting those moments that maybe aren't the gameplay and getting those kind of candid moments, either where it's celebrities and players or players on the bench or like the crowd? Yeah, yeah. I think... Um, I obviously always want to get the moment of the game, whether that's a basketball moment or an emotion. Like everyone that went to that game will be talking normally about one moment. And I always want to make sure to get that. Um, But I always know there's so many other photographers. I want to get all the action shots that the players and our team needs, but there's just so much emotion that goes on. So I want to know like, okay, is this guy's mom is like, is she, is she courtside? What's their like, just kind of background information that paints the picture and then it, it then makes the photo more meaningful for the player. And then, um, cause that's kind of where I started was just really getting the photos for the players. And then now I get to do it for the organization. But like, I love being able to provide them with something that is more meaningful, the emotion, all that kind of stuff. And then obviously the crowd, like our arena is tricky cause it's so dark. Um, so Getty like has the crazy cool flashes like so for example Braun's record breaking moment that was a Getty photo that went viral because they have the strobes of like everyone on their phone Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah like capturing our our fans and like it's hard though like it's you I get so and since I'm like really capturing all the basketball moments I get so sucked in but then that's what was so fun as an intern I wasn't getting on the court photos but I could like capture everything else which is right so it's it's mixing that because i want to get everything there. i feel like because that you don't get that on the tv broadcast right you just see the you see all the plays and it's cool to see like a different photo like a photo of a different angle but you never get to see like d'lo dapping up jack harlow you know like that's like the cool shit that i feel like people really like come for almost you you started doing carousels i feel like instagram giving you carousels was just like <laughs> a cheat code because before you're posting just one photo of the game or something right like yeah and now i feel like when i get to go to your instagram after the game I get to see the full story of the game. And I don't think many people do that. I feel like the photographers that I see that at least cover games, it's usually just highlights, which is fun. And like, that is the game. But when I look at your photos, I get this whole picture of like, oh, Jack Harlow was at the game. Oh, he dapped up this person. He took a picture with them and like they got to hug their mom or their kid was at the game. Why Why did you decide to start doing that? Was it a conscious decision where you just like, oh my gosh, we get carousels now. Yeah. Like, what did it kind of look that's, like? That's so nice. Um, I think I just want to, it's just always, I've always seen it of how you package it. And I've only, I've learned that from just consuming other people's content and stuff. But I see it as like, a sports 
photo doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people unless you paint the picture and put it in a context that makes sense. And so when I'm hopefully portraying the emotion and the intensity and just the, all the emotions in the arena, it makes everyone can um, relate to an emotion of something. And so it's more fun to watch that. And like one of my favorite compliments are if someone says like, I don't even care about sports, but I love your photos. I'm like, that's like so kind because I want you to connect to something, an emotion that's like being felt. So after a game, I pick those moments of like, I try to show everyone, I try to show everything. And it's like a puzzle piecing everything together of like, that was a crazy dunk. And then like, th that was the, you know, the bench went crazy. And then the coach giving the winning play or even, I mean, like the mop boys or something like you just every component of the game and like put it and packaging it together. And trying to just find all those little moments. How has workflow changed from like BYU days yeah. to now? Is there things that you've noticed you're like, oh, like if I could tell this to a younger photographer that's in college, this is what I would change right now after doing it for 10 years? I think it's just really impressive the way the technology has gone of how fast you can send everything. Like when I shot uh, BYU soccer, you know, I didn't have the cord to my phone sending it in real time. Whereas like the more you can have, the more you can document something in the moment when people really care about, the better the content's gonna do. And like, it just makes more sense. Like I said, like the next day posting photos of the win, people still will care, but not as much as people who like, aren't able to see the game that night or on the way to the game or like whatever it is, like the timing of it is huge. I would have tried to focus more on timing. And even that's the same with like, if I would go and shoot an athlete, they're not gonna care in a week about that athlete. They wanna show it's a good and bad thing. Like people are very impatient. Like people want their stuff like right away. And so that, I would just say capitalize on that cause it's really, it's really professional and it's really impressive. Can you talk about anticipating a shot versus just completely reacting to a shot? You're talking about LeBron's game winner yeah. or record breaking shot, right? everybody's anticipating that shot. So I'm sure you're trying to find what spot you wanna be on the floor, right? But that's more of, you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. So can you talk about other ways or other moments where you're like anticipating the shot versus just like, oh, that's a cool moment. Boom, I'm gonna swing my mm. camera and get the yeah, shot. Yeah, that's a great question. I like wrote a list of all the things I wanna do better for next season. And one of them that I catch myself doing all the time is like, getting a moment I'm anticipating and then checking right away because it, it helps me then build and shoot for the rest of the shoot. But there's so many times that me checking just completely ruins the moment. And that next thing was so much better than what I just shot. And like, it's just growing pains. Like it's always been like that, but I've really recognized it this past year that I need to like be so much better about it. And so, yeah, it's planning the moments, but just being so aware. And I think that's where people think like, oh, it's just taking photo or taking video, but like you're consciously anticipating everything going on. And like, I'll leave a practice and I, I didn't play basketball, so I don't truly know a lot of like basketball terms and stuff, but like I'll leave a practice and I'll be like, I really had no idea what they did. Cause I'm sitting here like thinking of everything else, cropping wise, angle wise, lighting wise, like just like any other shoot would plan as best as you can with your equipment for the unexpected moments. Like there's so many times where I don't have all my, like you can control your equipment and controlling that as best as you can and then reacting and letting it just be your tools rather than like, you know, being in the moment and just having to move around all your equipment like that sucks. Yeah, totally. Right. And you talked about um, how you have the new cords with the new technology and everything moves so quickly, right? So like, what are your deliverables photo wise um, during pre-game, during the game, after the game, are you editing, you know, those photos you take pre-game and then sending those off and then, okay, now we're doing warm-ups and doing that. Are you ever editing mid-game? Um, yeah, it depends on um, kind of the flow of the game, but the way all the pre-game stuff is really fun because the lighting's cool and it's all the emotion and all that stuff. Um, but there's times that that'll bleed into like the first quarter just depending on how much content you get. So like we'll shoot pregame and then we're all rapidly sending stuff as fast as we can, but you have to be, you have to know what you've shot and you have to select it on like this tiny icon, selecting it. You have to have the Wi-Fi working right, sending that off. 
This year we've like had some of our social people be runners for certain games. So like the record breaking night, we had runners running my card. So like at the end of that night, like I really didn't even know what I shot other than mm. I knew I shot when he made the basket and like all that stuff. But like, I'm not checking anything, which is like kind of fun to think that. But then like that night I was so excited just to like go through everything. Um, and then at halftime, just switching cards. Um, we keep it really minimal with editing. Like I would say compared to other teams, other teams are touching up a ton, whether that's the photo or a third party editing everything. Um, we keep it really simple, which I really like. So, Abigail, you've shot some really iconic moments from the last few seasons. This last season during the record night, were you super ready for that moment? Because right before, dude, I had to go to the bathroom. I mean, no way. Oh, dude, I, up in bro, the bathroom. They, 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 they threw a time. They threw a timeout, and I was like, "I'm gonna pee my pants, or I'm gonna get the shot." Right. Like, I don't know which one's gonna happen. So I just full court sprint into the bathroom. I'm like, it's like the scene in White Chicks yeah. where it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, move, you know. And I, like, I get in there. I'm like, sprint back, and there was this. I don't remember who the celebrity was. There's a celebrity in front of me. Same thing, and he like was running right behind yeah. me. Oh like, yeah. He's like, go man, go go go. And I got back, and I. Popped it up right as they inbounded. I'm like, okay, I, I think I got it. I hope, yeah, I got it. But yeah. how, how was the experience like for you? I was really, really, really nervous. I, to be honest, almost threw up before the game. I was oh so, so much pressure. nervous. It was so much pressure. I knew, I knew everyone would capture it. There'd be other photographers if I couldn't capture it. Like I never felt like pressure from our team. It was like mm. internally. <laughs> um, but I was like, we take turns with who's on the court every quarter. Um, fifty percent of the time, when you're on the court, you are blocked by a ref, so you can't control that. that Depending what ref you have, too, determines how much they're going to be in your shot or not. There's some refs that like don't even bother. There's some refs mm. that like just they're doing their job. Scott but, like, Foster, is he, is he, is he Scott shot right there? Every shot, I've had I, I don't, I don't know, but it, it honestly is so unfortunate. It depends. Yeah. So it's I was crazy. like, you know, and I had uh, conversations with our team of like, do I go wide? Do I go tight? We have someone in the ox shooting down, like. I think I'm going to shoot wide. I don't want to, you know, I can always crop in. I just don't want to shoot too tight. And so I was on the court for that quarter. Um, I think we were both sitting and everyone's like standing up at this point. And then I had someone behind me who was like, sit down. And I was like, not right now, please. <laughs> like, not right now. Um, Look at my vest. I'm with the right, Lakers. Right, right. Don't tell me to sit down. <laughs> Look at the vest. Oh, lady. But I was so nervous. And then we knew that if it happened before the fourth quarter, that like it would be stopped. And so capturing all that. But yeah, I also like I remember driving to that game, and I was like, I have done everything I can to prepare for this. So mm -hmm. like, I'll try my best and make sure everything's in my control that I can control, and then everything else just like fly on. The line. autofocus just messes up. I know. <laughs> Dude, it was nerve wracking. That was, I, I was sick to my stomach, just sick. like you, the whole, whole dude, I felt like you were in the finals MVP. Yeah. Right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Like it was like the creative people were like, yo, you, you gotta get that shot. I know. Like, don't mess that up. And that's that another up. thing is like, in that media room, we all then sit next to each other in this little corner and it's so fun and we all tease each other. And like, I knew if I didn't get that shot, like I just would never yeah. hear the end of it. <laughs> Which is funny because we haven't even like, we don't really, that shot isn't even that important. It's everything that happened after it and leading up to it that like paints a picture of it. So. It's so what crazy. Was, what was the energy like in the just the building that whole game was? Because I heard it's I heard it's like absolutely insane. Like it was nuts. It was for weird that game. though because everyone like they they knew, but like they I'm like no one knows anything. Like right. we don't yeah. know what's gonna happen. Um, but seeing other celebrities, like everyone come out, I was mm -hmm. like this has to happen tonight yeah but. and he was just he had cooking cook, what like 30 something 30? 36 36 yeah and was it was the just, magic number i think he was just like i'm doing it like i don't <laughs> yeah. care like this is it's tonight he you told, see that suit that he pulled yeah. up in? oh yeah, yeah. He, was told, suit, he was in batmobile he told suit, all dude. his celebrity friends yeah. he's like coming tonight i'm gonna do it i don't care <laughs> no and the kids he said that the kids had like a, a tournament or something they were gonna fly out the next day and it was gonna be mm -hmm. a heck like very yeah. hectic scheduling to like get the whole family back he probably was just like yeah i gotta do it tonight night like let's go i wonder how many free tickets lebron got to that game there was a lot i mean his whole family's there it was so cool to all see all his old teammates his whole teammates his whole fam like there's so many nba guys on other teams that were there yeah right it was crazy my, and every oh, celebrity players? yeah oh, every celebrity and their mother was you know? there dude my, my husband was at that game oh he got taylor and, got to go and he he's a lifelong lebron fan and so like there was a moment where cream gives him the ball 
I still don't think there's a photo of this, which I'm really happy about, but I start crying. Cause I like, I'm so relieved. It's mostly like I'm yeah. relieved the moment's over. And I'm like being professional about it. I'm not like, I'm crying literally while I'm shooting. Uh -huh. And then my husband has a video of him crying when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and cause he's just like, it's just amazing. Like to, to, to witness a sports moment, basketball, like, I just kept painting the picture of how big it really was. I was like, oh, this is really big for the Lakers. I was like, no, this is big for, for the history of basketball. Like, totally. this is insane. Like, to this is a be, record that yeah. will be, you know, there's so many stats in basketball, but like the number one stats, like who has the most points yeah. of all time? And right. that's him. So, is that the favorite Crazy. game that you've ever gotten to document? Or was there another game that is up there with that one? Um, Yeah, that's probably it. As far as game wise, yes. like, there's moments yeah. yes. that I could be like equally as cool, but like, or not equally, but really special but that for sure is like entirety of the game because it like you said it was him walking up it was his locker room shot it was him lacing up it was his pregame him wearing the headband was like the best mm -hmm. i was like so i was like okay it's happening today. yeah <laughs> but right. um but yeah that was really cool do you have do you have other moments that you could point to that you like love just like little um, ones um there's a photo i took of um when i was an intern um, Kobe had gone to two games and the first one I have I took of him and his agent our GM Rob Polinka mm -hmm. and that's like one of my favorite moments of all time because I remember when I took it I was like oh I wish I'd done a different angle like all the stuff and the, it's all of Kobe like you can't even really see Rob and it's like the emotion on Kobe's face and like that oh, was that's really, cool. really special I really yeah. love that photo yeah you were saying the energy in the room in the building it'd be really interesting I mean obviously you can't compare but the energy in Staples when Kobe dropped 81 because mm. nobody knew that was happening right. versus the right. energy with LeBron breaking the record. Anticipation. You don't know if it's going to happen, but it ha Suspense like happens. Suspense versus yeah. surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good That's a good point. You have a handshake with LeBron. How did that come <laughs> to happen? Um, That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> That's one of the cooler things. Yeah. Smoke weed with Snoop Dogg, handshake with LeBron. Yeah. Um, Preseason in... I think it was in Vegas. Um, he's always very nice and will come give a hug or like high five or whatever. And then like as a joke, this was in the weight room. I was just like, I'm just trying to get a handshake. Like he's infamous for having a million handshakes. Mm. He's like, okay, are you ready for one? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then he kind of built it. And then there was one part of it that like I kept messing up. And so... The only thing I contributed was like, oh, let's go up here instead of like down here. <laughs> or no, no, let's go down here instead of up here. See, so it's all. And then, and then it's like, ding, ding, which is like my favorite part uh -huh. of it. Cause it's little yeah. And seeing him just like pretend to oh, hold a little so camera cute. is like really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, dope. How do you think he remembers them? You think before, I don't know. you think Ron's in his room upstairs and he's just like, okay, like I'm going to like going through the roster, like cp3 like right. we're gonna see yeah. him and we're gonna see this like how seriously i there's think he's so many just, of them dude. i think he's just he remembers other shit i think it's just how his brain works dude. yeah he's a savant he's a little just <laughs> a genius. you know what's funny is like after the game i'll be like filming a press or something and like dave mcminiman will be like yeah so in the third quarter like he kind of slapped your hand he goes 8 27 on the clock like yeah. he was yeah. running right. on the post like right. through that lob yeah i was Punctual. right i was right there i'm like dude how do you remember like the, and he loves to do that dave throws yeah. him those like questions yeah, all the time i'm yeah. like how does he keep remembering exact like it's crazy it's crazy you I, would, I would like black out during, i'd be like yeah we we won right like, right clearly <laughs> <laughs> We did. I did well out there. Right. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy how like, for the Lakers photographic <laughs> his me memory is. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. I think he does. I mean, I don't get because there's so many. The teammates, one, I understand because when he's on the team with them, like people underestimate how much you're seeing of these people mm -hmm. every single day and mm -hmm. how long of hours you're with them. So that part of it, you know, if he's doing it enough every single day, like it's just so ingrained. But then like, yeah, it's the people that he then hasn't seen in like five years that he's just like. Automatic. I'm yeah, that's like, so wow. it's, it's mind boggling. It's like the sweetest thing, though. It's like you, you, you really care for that person. You really remember. It's just like, how do you do that? It's that's it's that. So Abigail, back up a little bit to BYU days. Okay. So you're in the ad program. No. Oh, you weren't in the ad program. Mm -mm. What were you in? Journalism. Oh, just regular journalism. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're in the journalism program. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Is it something that you'd recommend to someone that is a photographer? Do you find it helpful in your workflow now? Yeah, I I always did free. I did freelance since I was like 16. So I went into college knowing I really loved photo, but I went back and forth with the ad program and uh, journalism. It was kind of news media was like the newer 
major at the time and i wanted to do advertising because it was really competitive at byu i really liked that part of it but then i really had to step back and i was like i don't want to work at an ad agency and my only goal was like to work for nike at the time and so i went up to portland like four different times and talked to different people and like just begged them i was like i brought all this mock work and i was like this is just all i want to do i'll take out your trash i'll do whatever you want and they're like this is so great but like everything we do is not internal like it's all at it literally took like 20 people to someone finally told me like oh this is none of our work is here it's all like ad agencies and i was like okay well i don't want to work at an ad ad agency doesn't make sense for what i want to do i want to be more with the team i want to be more with the athletes and so then at byu i did I was a photographer for the BYU men's soccer team and I was very internal with that and loved being part of a team again because I played soccer all through high school. Um, And then I went to pick a major and I was like, I don't love school as it is. I just want to finish. And if I compare something with photography that I can learn another skill, that will be the best thing. So I would say that is like that worked for me and that was a piece of advice. Like I would say, I know it doesn't work for everyone, but like even if you have this creative skill for me i valued i didn't want to be in an art gallery one day i wanted to be i liked more the business side i want it to be like whatever it was and so pairing something that maybe you're already good at with something that you want to be better at is i think um was valuable and worked for me so and then i did it's a great nugget Right yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. Pop in, pop in. I mean, if you think about it, though, if you're already good at video, right? But like, what can I add? What can this? I add to that? What can you add to the arsenal? Because the internet was already t- like teaching me stuff. Like, there is so much to learn. Like, you know, pair with what you're learning online, and then getting those hours in real time. Like, I was shadowing people. I was making all this mock work, photo shoots, hands on. Okay, I want to do a shoot here with this, and I would style it myself. I would do this. I would find someone. Like all that kind of stuff builds this image and practice and all that kind of stuff for later work people like you have to build a fake not fake but you have to build a portfolio with work that represents what you want to do to get work that that'll eventually like. pay yeah. You. Yeah. Totally. yeah absolutely we talk about that all the time i mean it's so yeah. important and like how they're never going to pay you for something unless you've shown that oh this is an you example what i could do for nike yeah. or whatever right. you what, know yeah which is hard and confusing at the time because you're like how do i even get my first sh- like shoot but like okay do you have a nephew like go to his game and literally make it look like the sickest thing ever and like the sickest game even if it's with like bad equipment and bad lighting like that'll only give you experience that will be better for future stuff so if there's a person and they want to get into photography they want to shoot for one of the highest level nba teams and they're just starting out and they're in high school what would your advice be to that person i would say i got all my best reps in high school like we had a really good so uh my cousin I was talking about, he was on the basketball team and we were nationally ranked. And then our football team was really good too. And I naturally loved going to all the games, but that will only show you, you know, if you really love it, figuring out a way to equipment, I would get a camera, like a really small point and shoot for Christmas. And then I would save up all year and then sell it and then get a bigger camera. And then like building, building, building because equipment sucks at that age. Cause you like have no money and mm. you're trying to figure it out. But, and then, or even borrowing someone. Like I remember borrowing my friend's dad's camera and just going to as many games as possible, doing that turnaround, building your portfolio, saving your best work, super, super precise with it. Um, yeah, and just having it, having it on a spot that you can easily show people. Like even out and about with family or friends and they'll be like, oh, like little Jimmy here loves taking photography, whatever, like have something to show to like show people that you really care about it and you really want to do it. And when, when you were doing this, you're getting all these reps and whatnot. When did you start charging? Because you had like a great wedding business going Mm -hmm. when you were in college, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how did you, you know, get into charging for your work and how did you kind of find where your price is going to sit in the market? Yeah. I, I got asked by a senior when I was a sophomore to like take her senior pictures and then she offered which was like really nice looking back because i think it would have taken me a little longer to like feel comfortable to charge but then like once you charge that first time you're like Mm -hmm. oh my equipment's expensive my time is relatively cheap right now but like it'll continue to to gain its worth and so um and then i'm trying and then the first what i i shadowed weddings for a long time and then the first wedding i did um 
I was really transparent about it. I think that's like my piece of advice that's really important is like, let the client know that like, in my eyes, maybe some people won't do this, but like in my eyes, like let them know, like this is my portfolio. I feel really comfortable doing this. I'm trying my best, but like it is my first one. And I feel like there really is someone who will like take that gamble and like want a cheaper rate or whatever. And then once you have that first one, it's just like really good base. You can have one project saying, this is the wedding I did. Shoot way more than you think you need to. Build um, selects from that. And then it's just slowly. And then you, I think the hardest part looking back is figuring out how to like continually price. Like that's something I still like have a hard time with is like, uh -huh. I'll take a break from it and then I'll come back to it. And then I'm like, okay this is how much I always think my time's worth, but when I'm in Los Angeles, my time is worth something different than like when I'm in Utah or vice versa, based off the market, based off what client, like it's just tricky. It's so many things that kind of go into it's, it. Yeah, like it, if anything, it's just something that's never easy, unfortunately. Episode 72? <laughs> yeah, 72? We, we talked about pricing last week, or two weeks ago, two episode weeks ago. 72. <laughs> <There it is laughs> episode 72. It was really fun to just like go through, we were making yeah. up all these different numbers and stuff for brands. We researched, we didn't yeah. make them up. No, no, but like, <laughs> uh, I mean like we kind of came yeah, up with yeah, them, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you notice any similarities between shooting weddings and sports? Anticipating that is a good question. Reacting. That is a good question. Um, I remember when I was interviewing, they were asking me because I had done a lot of weddings right before I applied, and I had always loved sports and had experience in sports. But I was like, one benefit of weddings is I'm working with someone on their most stressful day of their lives. Like mm. these people are very stressed out. This is high intensity, and like that can relate directly to like what I'm shooting game wise. If not, like. Like it's just a basketball game, you know, where <laughs> sometimes like someone's wedding, I'm just like, it's very stressful. But um, I also just love the portraiture. I'm happy I did weddings to really nail colors and skin tones and lighting and natural light. Like um, I'm happy I had that skill set with weddings because everything's so on the fly. Um, and that's why I did journalism because I love photojournalism, but the market at the time and for uh, expenses and stuff, weddings made most the most sense. And all, like in Utah, all my friends were getting married. So like something that paints the picture is like, yeah, I was 20, 21, like doing weddings, but I was shooting all my friends' weddings. And then like, now that I'm like 27, like I'm not doing as many weddings. So I'm like, oh, all my friends are like already married. Like <laughs> just like <laughs> <fun>. chill. <laughs> so you've stopped shooting a lot of weddings. Yeah, I'll take, one or two or something if it makes sense but the timing of it's hard like we don't really our off season so small and then in the off season the last thing i want to do is like shooting winning but you get right. the ones that make sense and they're like great so, so you like recuperate our brains in yeah. the off season yeah. yeah and then it's fun when you take a step back from it and like come back to it i'm like oh this is like so special so cool but sports is Really fun. Sports is life. Sports is it. So back in back in like your college days, we noticed that you're shooting like a Pelicans game. You're shooting yeah. a Falcons game. Yeah. You went and shot a few jazz games. How did those opportunities come about? And was that like after you shot those things, we were like, I want to be in sports like, yeah. at the highest level possible. Yeah, I was like, I it just I loved it so much and I was so eager to share everything from it because I just loved it. Um, I had a, I went to high school with Frank Jackson, who then played for the Pelicans. So he was really great and let me come out and shoot a Duke game. And then I went out and shot a Pelicans game. And then I had another buddy in uh, college who wanted to do social media marketing for athletes. And so he got me a press pass for the Falcons game. And then he's the one who got me the press pass for a Lakers game. I was already in LA shooting a wedding. I was like, hey, I'm already here. If you can get me a press pass, I got a press pass and shot pregame Kyle Kuzma and I met Erica and Daryl and I think I met Rohan. And so I took those photos, I tweeted them and then someone sent them to the VP of marketing at the Lakers at the time. Wow. So then he's like, what are you doing after college? And I'm like, moving to LA. <laughs> <laughs> Literally completely faking it. I was either moving to Salt Lake or I was moving to LA. And I was like, well, if I'm just gonna move, I'm just gonna go for it. And so I moved to LA and then a month later, camp lakers and he's like you want to do some contracted work you know get your hands on shooting stuff i was like yes so i went and shot camp lakers and then internship happened because you're from utah originally mm -hmm. what city uh, yeah so i grew up in the bay okay. and then i moved to high school 
moved to Utah in high school and then I did college and I was in Alpine, which is in between Provo and Salt Lake. Got it. And so what was the transition like from there to LA? Um, I mean, I grew up, I'm happy. I like, I loved Utah and it was a great time, mm-hmm. but I'm really, I loved my time growing up outside of Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just a bigger market and then obviously right. more sports teams and just a, a d- diversity of projects and like possibilities with everything. I There are so many possibilities in Utah, right. um, but I just wanted to try something new. I love change and wanted to mix it up. And um, my, I have family here. And so um, in college, I'd probably come out here once or twice a year and I loved it. Hell yeah, it makes sense. So I, I also have a, another question for you about the bucket list family. Oh yeah. So you were working for the, you've been, I mean, around the world, right? When mm-hmm. did that start? 2018, you got a job with the bucket list family? Yeah. So I was in, I think I was a junior in high school. My sister played BYU soccer and she saw it posting from Garrett saying, Hey, we need a new photographer for the BYU men's soccer team. And she sent him my little website when I was 17 years old of just these little pictures I took. And he's like, great, cool. And so I showed up and he thought I was in college and I was just like 17. I was like, hey. <laughs> You're a and, he's, and we just became really good friends and I shot the BYU soccer team. And then um, 2013, he was like, I'm gonna sell everything and I'm gonna travel the world with my family. And I was like, what? And he's like, I might bring a photographer. And I was like, and so I was, I, we like had all these conversations. We kind of laid it out and they ended up going with someone that was a family. So they the mom was a photographer, a video, dad was videographer, all this stuff. And then they ended up just, it made more sense for them to do all the content themselves. But there was a time where I was like, I'm going to drop out of college, like go <laughs> travel the world. But he made it so great because he would bring me out once or twice a year on these trips and just give them like a ton of content. And honestly, we just got to hang out. Like it was just, I got to bounce ideas from a, like number honestly number one mentor like in my life for creativity and go-getter and everything he's just like the greatest i mean it's That's amazing so cool. what they built i mean they have yeah. a huge youtube channel and it gets views dude oh like, yeah it's mm-hmm. raking in views it's crazy and so they just travel all around the world with their mm-hmm. family how many yeah. of them is there like five four there's three kids oh three they kids. have two okay. boys and a girl yeah and my favorite was like he would bring me on a trip, but it wouldn't just be like, he was very strategic and he's like, I'm gonna take her on like the picturesque trips. Mm-hmm, so I went mm-hmm. to Galapagos Islands twice, Sick. which was cr- like, I'm never so gonna igu- go there. Saw the iguanas? Right. Saw the, yeah, saw the iguanas, saw every animal possible in the water. We like right. swam so with cool. seals and like sea turtles and all that stuff. And then um, we went to the Falkland Islands, which is down by Patagonia in Argentina, mm-hmm. like off the coast and like hung out penguins. And, <laughs> so like, fun. So the were, most picturesque thing. Were in the they world. just going to very like desolate areas that like not because like no one's at the Galapagos, right? It's not like a lot. Yeah. It's not like a pop in town. It's like Galapagos. all scientists. So like everyone scientists, we went right? there with okay. are like yeah. maybe not all scientists, but like very science Marine bio Darwin. curious people. Yeah. Like yeah. still there <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, it's not, as, like, <laughs> not this like, you know, beach island trip. Mm-hmm. It's just like you literally it's like an aquarium like a real life aquarium. You're just like this is a cra- or zoo. It's it sounds crazy. like, I would, like it. I would love this yeah, place. You gotta go. Yeah. yeah I would love it was place. really cool. But yeah, they they have offers and um relationships with people all over the world and they just have gone everywhere. That's, That's so, so cool. cool. And you were just providing them with like content for of their family. I'd go out for the week. Yeah. He would be like it was so funny in college too. He'd be like, What are you doing in two weeks? And I'm like I mean, I have a final, I have this, I have this, mm. but I'm like, nothing, like, what's up? <laughs> and then you just figure it out. Like I had, most of the time I had, you know how it goes, like professors that are like, the first day of class, I'd find out how many classes I can miss to like still get a grade and then mm. figure it out. But it all worked out. And that has done, I, I knew going into it, I'm like, this will do more for my career than like this totally. science class I'm Absolutely. taking or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, so. seriously. They, they did video, you right? The, the- Bucket list family? Yeah, bucket list family. Mm-hmm. Did you ever um, have, desire to start videography or were you just like i'm just doing photo and this is what i doing. did video with photo up until like junior year of college so i filmed weddings as well oh, okay my first wedding i did i actually filmed um and i love video um the last year or two i did less because i knew i was loving photo and then i actually got some video equipment stolen out of my car and then i was like this is a sign like i just don't think i'm gonna do as much because it's just so equipment heavy photo photo is very equipment heavy as well but um the other components 
were just like pretty overwhelming and i i just kind of had to pick one at one point costa's got that sign too yeah from the same, same exact sign same exact same exact also sign. got my camera yeah. equipment stolen and i'm leaning more heavy towards photo yeah. yeah so it's like just i just need a camera and a lens yeah. and, you know. i know but it's small part of me that regrets it because it's just a video dominant world now with tiktok and all that stuff and but i'm happy that i have a base knowledge of it and that's why i have so much respect for people who do do it because i'm like i take an average influencer who are making like three four five tiktoks a day i'm like if your background's non-video that's exhausting mm -hmm. like how are you yeah. doing that like that's so impressive like whatever their content is even if i don't like it or whatever i'm like i have so much respect for them because they are setting up a camera lighting it like micing it up editing it like uh, most of the time they'll have people but a lot of time they're doing it all so like Put some put some respect but, on these influencers. Yeah. There's always room at the top for a photographer. You know what yeah, I mean? totally. You guys are great at what you do. There'll never be. There's never going to be. I think a problem for you guys to no. ever find work. Right. You know. It's always gonna. They're always going to need a great photographer. Yes. You know. Have you been able to shoot for Nike yet? I know you said that was your goal. Granted, kind you've of. shot. Nike's biggest fucking athlete. <laughs> right. But have you shot a campaign for them yet? Kind of. I have um, a friend of mine who's also an influencer and she did a campaign with Nike. And so she flew me out to Utah for a day and we did some photos. And then uh, she was with her family. It was like a family. She was really cute. And then I think it was like a week or two after she sends me a screenshot and it was like the homepage on the app for the day. Sick. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> so, wow. so, so sick. I, but part of me, I mean, I'm not satisfied enough. I want yeah. to do some. Really Gotta do big, a whole campaign. Mm -hmm. I just want, or even I love where I'm at too now, where like if an image is used, we've had, I've had stuff I've shot given to Nike, but nothing um, sent, but someday like i just directly. think you have such leverage over other such people leverage. because you're like no no no. i shoot your best athlete <laughs> on a night in night out spaces i can shoot you know whatever yeah. other sport Braden is the same way where it's like if he's ever getting hit up to do sports stuff they're like he's like do you know who you're talking to like <laughs> i shoot the lakers like so i'll have I, I did a wedding where like the younger brother was like just stoked on life that i was shooting oh, and funny. i had to almost be i literally was like I know you're so stoked, but I need to do my job uh, and I will talk to you later. But like, <laughs> that's so funny. One of my favorite things is when I tell people about, you know, like the podcast and stuff. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, Brayden's like one of the head content directors of Lakers. Like, and they're like, what? Like, that's crazy. And then I'm like, Chase does cars. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a mullet. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. But no, people that. really like, Lake, like the Lakers is one of the such a big brand, biggest so, brands. Yeah, it's such a people get brand. hyped about sports yeah, really too. Do. You gotta pinch yourself. I know, right? Do you feel like numb to it at a point? Not numb, but like you. I remember vividly the first like probably month of documenting the games when I'd be able to get to go to a game. My heart would not stop racing. Like the whole time you're down on the floor, I'd be like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yes, dude, don't have a panic attack. Like, stay calm. Take deep breath. Take deep breath. Like, I couldn't, I could not calm. It almost when we'd fly the FPV drones. You know that <laughs> yeah, feeling oh, yes. you get? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just start to, like, sweat oh, a little bit. Imagine. And my heart's racing. I'm like, okay, just, like, get the shot. And, like, don't try to shake. <laughs> right. Like, get the yeah. shot. And I don't know. I, now I feel like, go grab the camera. Like, let's go. It's not, I don't get that same feeling. But I know how big the moment yeah. is. You know, you know, like, how impressive it is yeah. to be in that presence. I love, and I've grown to love the feeling of, like, being nervous for something. Like, I get stoked on that. I'm like, I'm doing mm. something right. If I'm, like, nervous shooting something, when I'm really bored shooting something, I'm like, oh, I gotta kind of, like, you know, there's creativity, like, mixing things up, making things look different. But, like, the more I've shot games and then the riding the wide riding the wave of being nervous um i think you get used to it and then it makes you just want to continue to to do that but i would say the thing that i see with like the lakers brand that always kind of m brings it into reality is just seeing like just the fans like everywhere like i'll even just like come home from a shoot or something and go to the gas station i'll have like a lakers polo on and like people light up and i'm like that's so cool like i don't i want to be a part of you know this company for that reason of the way it like brings joy into people and then you also get the fans that are like what we're doing right. it's like, <laughs> but we were at anna's but people care oh like God. that's yeah. what's so great and that's all i wanted as a creator in college was for people to care 
about what I was producing and shooting and then to work for a company that people really care about good and bad is like, well, at least you're talking about it yeah. rather than like. Do you remember when we were at Anna's going away party and the Boston fan just could not let her finish her speech? Oh, really? No I wasn't way. there. Oh, you weren't there? No. Dude, but the fans are just like crazy on both sides. This guy was yeah. like a Boston Celtics fan. Our girl's giving, Anna is giving like, she, she was leaving, oh. she was leaving the company, right? So she's like giving the speech. She's like, it was at a great restaurant? speech. Halfway through the speech, Boston guy, Fuck the Lakers! Oh, and we're no. like, yo, yo, bad time. Like, she's yeah. finishing her speech. She's like, guys are terrible. Like, oh, I'm no. like, no, 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 seriously. Like, we're good. Like, yeah. move it along. Uh, move it along. Uh, it's just so also, dr- just read the room of what yeah. right. city you're in. Yeah, yeah, what was going on? We're like, dude, this guy's freaking out. It was so funny. What an ass, it, dude. It, it was just so wild. Abigail, what are you most excited for for the upcoming season? Working on that one thing I talked about. And Ooh. just not just... Um, Playing around with new equipment. We have some new equipment that we're Ooh, working on. Christmas is coming. Oh, hell I'm just yeah. ready uh, just to be, it's a weird thing to like want to work on. I want to be even more organized than I already am. I feel like post game, I organize everything, but I want to create and just build a even better system of what I have. So everyone has everything they need. Cause that's another part of my job is just like photo archiving everything and making sure like everything is given to everyone that needs it ahead of time before they have to ask. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It's kind of a nerdy answer. But <laughs> no, yeah, I, like, I like it. You're being and winning games. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> winning games. What would be your advice to your 18 year old self? That's a good question. I've been thinking about. You've been thinking. That I texted one. her that one yesterday. Yeah, nice. Just kidding. I just heard it right now. <laughs> um, I would say to not. I feel like I'm a pretty reactive person with things. I'm an emotional person, so I'll emotionally react, and that can be good and bad. And I would say with life in general, with work, to not let the heat of the moment get to you. And so that's not taking things personally, knowing that that's coming from a different individual and not letting it affect you, and like take time to think over before you give a response. There's that. times like with clients, or I, I do this where like if I don't text someone back right away, I gone i'm not seeing it for like three weeks or whatever so i i'm really good at sending it right away and like giving everything they need to in the moment but there's times where someone will client will ask something and i'm very reactive and i just want to check it off my checklist but there's my husband taught me this like there's so many times where i just need to like take a deep breath read over it see what they're actually saying like there's so many times i read text and it's so different than like what i think they're saying um yeah and that helps professionally and with relationships in general just like be patient chill that. out i love it <laughs> we will link all of abigail's uh, channels below but thank you all so much for tuning in to episode four of the 505 podcast 200 likes. help us get 200 likes dude smash the like button I'm hit quitting. the subscribe smash. button dude and we'll see you guys we we'll see you guys all next week peace Bye. Later. thank you